first incident happened on campus uh, and um, he hugged me very tightly and rubbed himself against me. It made me feel extremely um, uncomfortable and um, it was a revolting act. Um, the second incident was uh, in Parliament when um, I went to have a political conversation with him and he told me that um, let's not talk about politics, do you have a boyfriend? And he also mentioned that, he also said that um, if nobody was in his office he would have taken me there. I was absolutely shocked and I wasn't really expecting that. And you brought your phone, there was a text message or more than one text message, yes, tell me yes. about that. Um, so a few weeks after, after um, I refused to respond to his calls, he left that message uh, saying that um, I'm an attractive, um, lovely young woman and um, um, a man would be, would be lucky to have me as a lover and if he was young, um, but he's not. <laughs> And how did you feel then? How do you feel now about <laughs> Again, I was very of... shocked. I wasn't really expecting that. And uh, I don't think um, someone who's representing the people in Parliament should act like that. And it made me feel extremely uncomfortable. This is why I decided to do something about it. Did you say anything to Kelvin Hopkins at the time? Um, yes, I did. I said, um, thank you for your kind words but you didn't protest at the way he was behaving at the time at the time no no okay you complained later on yes did you give every detail of what you say happened yes yes um i spoke a few months it, it took me a few months to actually decide if i wanted to raise it with the party and eventually um i got in touch with uh, one of the mps offices and they put me in touch with Rosa Winterton, the chief whip of the Labour Party, and she responded to my complaint. Um, although um, I didn't take, she told me that it can't remain, it can't be anonymous if we are going to report it, and that actually really um, that scared me um, because obviously I didn't want my name to be all over the place, and um, so. I didn't take it further, um, yeah. Okay, but then you were told that your complaint was being taken seriously? By Rosa Winterton, yes. Um, but by the leader's office, no. Because um, the, chief, the, the chief whip of the Labour Party at the time, she informed the leader's office and um, I also have evidence that uh, the regional office uh, in the east of England, they contacted the leader's office about this and it was ignored. And um, I myself tweeted to Jeremy Corbyn about, um, about this incident. It was during the cabinet reshuffle. Mm. Um, you tweeted? Directly to Jeremy Corbyn. In a direct message? Yes. No, no, no. It was. Um, it was not a direct message. You just, just put, on, put on Twitter. Yes, yes. What did you say on, online on Twitter to Jeremy um, Corbyn? I told him that he shouldn't um, demote Rosie Winterton because she stood by me um, when, uh, when I reported LMP for misbehaviour. Um, so I'm, I'm absolutely, um, I'm very disillusioned because um, just a few months later, I, I realised that Jeremy Corbyn um, promoted Calvin Hopkins to the shadow cabinet. And despite the fact that the leader's office was aware of this, and um, they refused to act. And I'm very, that made me, made me feel very powerless and isolated and alone. So you feel clearly let down by the party, which you still support, I presume? I do, because... Um, the amount of support I've been receiving from the party, uh, from, the par from various people within the Labour Party, have been, have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, there are people in the party who helped me with raising this issue. But what really distraught, dis distraught taught me is that um, the leader's office knew this and didn't act on it. And um, a few, a couple of weeks ago, um, I have been working on this on this issue with uh, the Telegraph, and um, yesterday um, I had a meeting with the Chief Whip of the Labour Party, um, 
and raise it with them again. Um, but what they told me, I mean, yeah, what, what was told was that um, I have to make a complaint through a formal procedure, um, that means going through the NEC. A few hours later, um, the NEC, um, a lady, um, a few hours later, someone called me from the Labour Party and told me that, asked me for um, an explanation about what happened. And she told me, um, if you could write down a statement and send it to us, uh, we would publish it. Uh, well, sorry, we would um, deal with your complaint. Uh, but it's a very formal complaint and it's going to take a few days. But a few hours later, um, I was contacted again by the same person in the Labour Party and um, she told me um, they were contacted by a journalist and they were going to publish about Kelvin Hopkins. So um, I've spoken to the, to the whip and we have decided to suspend Kelvin Hopkins. This happened exactly just a few minutes before the publication of the article. And the reason they did this is because a few minutes before, sorry, a few, um, yeah, probably a few minutes or hours before, um, the, the Labour Party received, um, a, um, it was contacted by The Telegraph um, regarding a comment on this issue. Um, so you believe the Labour Party took the action that it's taken now simply to avoid embarrassment? Yes, 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 absolutely, yeah. Um, basically, they tried to cover it up because they had no intention to act this quickly before that, and I have evidence to prove it. But a few hours later, they told me that they suddenly decided, after the journalists contacted him, they, they suddenly decided to suspend him. And they say it's because, um, obviously, you had raised this issue two years ago. And, um, but I don't believe that. Mm. I do think, because they had previously told me this, this has to go through a formal process. What do you hope happens now as a result of yours and maybe other cases? What do you hope is going to change as a result of all of this? Well, it was a very hard decision for me to go public on this, but I don't want this to happen to future um, political activists, um, and I would like, and what we now, what, what we need now is an independent reporting body to investigate this. Because <laughs> what we saw yesterday shows that this wasn't dealt with independently and the party tried to cover it up. And do you believe this sort of thing, as you describe it, will go on happening? Or do you think something is going to change now, maybe for good? I believe... Yeah, I believe so, because um, over the past few weeks, we have witnessed all the um, MPs, uh, whether in the Labour Party or um, in the Conservative Party or other parties, have been exposed. And many of, uh, as we saw um, a few days ago, Mark Fallon resigned from the um, Cabinet, which I think this shows that uh, Westminster is very, uh, you know, the culture is changing and um, they're working on it. And I'm very pleased, but I'm still disillusioned by the Labour Party by how they handled this, especially the, um, the leaderships, um, Corbyn's leadership. Well, that was the young party worker, Eva Etimazda, talking to our deputy political editor, John Pienaar. The prominent Labour backbencher, Jess Phillips, has criticised the promotion of Kelvin Hopkins to the shadow cabinet last year after that allegation had been made. She said that decision seemed wrong. Well, I mean, I think it's probably going to be all part of an investigation, but I don't think I would have promoted him having known uh, that this uh, had taken place and there was evidence because there was text message evidence. Um, so I don't think I would have promoted him. And I know that the victim felt a little bit bereft by his promotion. Uh, that was the Labour MP Jess Phillips. We've also heard from Labour's Shadow Chief Secretary, Peter Dowd, who welcomed cross-party action on this issue, but stressed it should be transparent. I think that what the key to this is to make sure that this is transparent and open and that people feel able, whatever the mechanism, whatever the process, that they don't feel that they are uh, discouraged from coming forward with their 
particular complaint or the particular allegation. Now, the exact mechanisms around that uh, are very important, but I think it's got, to f it's got to feed into that open and transparent environment that we all should operate in. Peter Dowd there. Labour's leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has uh, refused to comment when he was approached by journalists this morning. Good morning, Mr Corbyn. Good morning, nice to see you. Did you know that Calvin Hopkins... Good morning, nice to see you. Thank you for coming to my road. Goodbye. Did you know that Mr Hopkins' behaviour before he promoted him, sir? Were you aware of the allegations against him, Mr Corbyn, before you promoted him to the Shadow Cabinet? Thanks. Were you aware of the allegations against Mr Hopkins, sir? Goodbye. That was Jeremy Corbyn's reaction.